All right, guys, I'm back today with a video comparing the Outback to the Compass. This is the 2019 Outback, and this is a 2018 Compass. The same Compass as they sell today. This is 2018, 2019 is a little bit different, barring a few changes. But let's hop right into it. I'm going to do a walkthrough, side-by-side -side comparison of the Hobie Compass and the 2019 Hobie Outback. All right, guys, so let's start off here with the bow of each kayak. Now, you're going to see... A lot of similarity and a little bit of difference. Um, if you look closely, they look exactly the same at the very front. The Outback is a little bit wider as it, the further it moves back. Um, it kind of it, it widens a lot faster than on the Compass. The Compass kind of stays narrow until about the end of the front compartment, front hatch, whatever you want to call it, and then it starts to get wide. And these boats are both 34 inches wide. Now, if you see, you have a front hatch right here, which is an actual hatch compartment here on the with the sail mast on the uh, 2019 Outback. And over here, you basically just have this bungee netting, and you can move your circular center hatch up front here but as you can see the outback does have the better hatch in my opinion if you don't like hatches then maybe you like the compass better now the next thing let's just hop right into is the 180 drive if you get the regular compass it's going to come with the gt drive which is the drive without reverse if you upgrade to the 180 drive, you're gonna get the old style 180 drive. It's basically the 180 drive, but with the old style pedals that you have to squeeze like this to adjust. Whereas with the 2019 Outback and 2018 Outback, basically everything 2018 and above besides the compass comes with these new ARC 180. And these have the button on top that lets you adjust. So, that's the difference in the Mirage drives. Now let's move to the, the well, or the kind of deck space you got. Seems like the compass is a little bit wider. As you can see, this is a little bit narrower, but you're adding all kinds of features on the Outback. You get the front rod holders, here you don't. You get the Guardian pull cable. On this, you get the regular Lowrance ready stuff. You do get the track system on the compass. Here you get dual track system, and one's built into an A-trail. And you get four up front, whereas you get two up front on this. Now you do get the rectangular hatch standard with the Outback, and it is mounted in this kind of horizontal mounting which I've seen people do with the compass you can mount it this way and I've seen people even mount it this way um, probably a good mod would be to wait for when that one becomes available I think in this this coming spring and that would give you more uh, foot room because basically it's about as wide as this it's just longer and um, you get one cup holder it doesn't have a really good way of keeping it in. My wife complains about it, uh, the cup holder not being so good that it doesn't really have much to keep the cup in the holder because it's, you know. Whereas this, you get two cup holders. One there, one there. That one accepts smaller drinks. Now, the biggest difference between these two, in my opinion, would be the seat. The seat you get with the Compass is better than most kayaks, I would say but not quite up to Hobie standards. Whereas this, you come, you know, you got the kickstand and adjust up and back on the front and the rear. You have an adjustment here, and then you have lumbar adjustment. This, there's no high-low seating like the Outback. There's very little adjustment with this cheap strap, like front and back right here. And then if you look on the back, 
think that's intended to maybe be lumbar support, but it's basically non-existent. And the one thing my wife complains about is this bar right here. She says when she sits here for a long period of time, this kind of like digs into her butt and leaves her butt sore. This, I have not had any issues. I think it's very comfortable. Of course, it's not as comfortable as something like the Pro Angler, but what really is, um, well, I would say it's probably just as comfortable. It's just not as easy to stand up and sit down in. But you also get these mesh pockets on the outback. It's already Lowrance ready on both sides or fish finder ready on both sides. This comes with the fish finder through holes, but they don't come installed. Or at least they didn't in 2018. That I don't know for sure if they did that if they changed that in 2019. You get a very similar style rudder control on the outback, but it's dual. So you get one on each side. Where the compass, see it's very similar to the outback. It's raised a little bit higher, I think. But other than that, it's basically a 2.0 version of what the Compass started last year with that. Now let's move to the tank well. But you do get you do get two rod holders in the back, just like you do with this, with the Outback. And you get two scuppers in the back. For this, you have four, two in the back, two in the front. This is the standard bungee. I removed the standard bungee on this. Uh, I don't really care for them when I put a crate or whatever in the back. And as you can see, the tank well is a little bit bigger on the outback. This definitely helps this cut out right here. Where the bungees are, you can set something really long crossways through here. Whereas this, you can't. And it seems this is a little bit longer this way. And Hobie included a spot where you can cut out for a eight inch circular hatch, like it's in the middle of the compass right there. I have seen people put the six inch Hobie round hatch right here. So it's just not flush mount like they did on the Outback. The rudder style is very similar. As you can see, the base the only difference I see as this one is not quite as heavy duty. It's only got two screws and it's raised in the middle to match the body lines of the compass. Where this is circular and more flat like the Outback is and it has four screws, so it seems a little more heavy duty. I think this is left and right as far as, because it's dual steering. I think that's what that might be. And that's why that one only has two screws and that one has four. This does come kind of power pole ready. You have to buy an adapter plate, so. There's your two mounting points along with right here. This comes completely ready for power pole. So all you gotta do is put your four screws in, you're good. Now I'm gonna drop the rudders. All right, so as you can see, the rudder right here and the compass right here, they are very similar, basically the same. I think the Outback's rudder is a little bit wider like uh, this way and this one's a little bit more narrow and as for the carry handles in the back you just get the regular old Hobie style this one comes with the H rail where you can kind of mount something to that if you wanted to it's more like the pro angler style not quite as wide and then you, you get one drain plug on the back for each so, they're very similar boats. It almost seems as the Outback is now the premium of the, it's like a premium compass. You get the two paddle clips, you get two dual steering, you get more a trail or tracks. You get the tracks in the back, you get more room in the back, you get more hatches, stuff like that. But the hole, I'm gonna show you guys the hole here in a minute. I'm gonna flip them over so you can guys can get a good idea what they look like. All right, so here's the underneath of the Outback. And 
here is the underneath of the compass. As you can see, they're very similar. Very similar. They're almost identical. So as you guys can see, there are a lot of similarities and quite a bit of differences between the Compass and the Outback. The big thing is it's basically a baseline product in the Compass and a premium product in the Outback. That is my biggest difference that I could find. It's more hatches, more tracks, just more features that are already built in where the Compass is more of a blank slate aimed to get a lower price entry model kayak. It's like having a baseline truck and then a King Ranch or an SR5 or whatever truck you drive. That is the premium model. They've put more features in it. It's the same thing basically, but a little bit better. Um, as far as the whole designs go, they're one's just as stable as the other in my opinion. Maybe the Outback is a little more stable, a little more length to it, but they're the same width, same hole design. They're very similar. You're just paying for a better seat, a better Mirage drive, more rigging positions with it has six tracks versus two, four rod holders versus two, a front hatch versus no hatch, a square hatch versus a circular hatch, and a cutout for a circular hatch versus no cutout at all. Dual rudders, dual paddle holders, power pole ready without a plate, mat pockets. I mean, you're, you're basically paying for the little things, but I did the math, and if you did everything to this compass that you do, that you get with the Outback, I think it's actually a better deal to go with the Outback because it's gonna come out to about the same and you're gonna have a better seat with the Outback. Like if you add the mat pocket and the A-trails and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna have a better kayak with a better seat with the Outback. Anyways guys, this is just a walkthrough video. I know um, Tommy Tech did a old Outback to new Outback walkthrough. I wanted to do a compass to the new Outback because I think that's more of a successor of the Compass than it is the Outback with the way it's designed. And a lot of people are debating whether they should get a Compass or the new Outback since it's basically a premium Compass. But this is just a walkthrough, go through everything, all the differences and everything. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped you out and I'll see you in the next one.